Today, I've set myself a rather hopeless goal to introduce this machine in about 10 minutes. That's going to be tough because we're talking about a really, really good machine that can do a whole lot of things. This is the Orto R2, Orto's impressive new compact machine. It's compact in the sense that it's neatly housed in a closed box with a securely lockable lid, but the actual workpiece size you can effectively use is actually quite large. You can comfortably work with various materials up to 300 by 210 or 300 by 190 millimeters, depending on which specific head is currently installed. Besides that, it has a lot of impressive features that truly make it stand out from the average. It has a conveniently built-in camera, a highly efficient ventilation system that blows the smoke out the back, and very advanced fire detection capabilities. By the way, this is a Class 1 machine, which means you do not even need to wear these safety glasses to use it. You can use it without safety glasses, even in an office, even in a closed office, since you can vent the smoke out of the room through the smoke exhaust system, so everything won't get smelly and smoky. I should say a few words about the assembly and the setup process as well, because, well, there really isn't any significant assembly required with this particular machine, since the Orter R2 arrives just like this, exactly as you see it here on the table. You don't need to connect any cables at all. You don't need to check belt tension. You basically don't need to set up anything whatsoever. You just simply give it power, connect it to your PC if you want to, and then attach the smoke exhaust hose, which conveniently screws on at the back and is incredibly long, providing ample reach. You attach the pump for the air assist system, more precisely its hose, since they also provide an air assist pump, which is included in the price of the machine, and you'll definitely need it for cutting. And once you've done that, you're basically ready to go and can use the machine. I really can't say more about how to assemble or set it up, because you're essentially taking a fully operational machine out of the box. I'll show you the machine with my small camera, as I usually do. So, as I mentioned, this is a compact machine. It has a large lid that can be lifted up and you can place the workpiece down here at the bottom. I've already put a small card in here and I'll explain later why I put it there. The point is that here you can see where you can place the workpiece and on this side you can see the little slider, the stop, which you need to adjust according to the size of the head you're using. And as you know, the size of the workpiece can be either 190 or 210 millimeters and this here is the place for the limit switch, which you need to set yourself. It's very important to note that this machine has a highly advanced fire detection system. There isn't just fire or smoke detection in the printhead itself, but there are also numerous sensors strategically placed in all four corners of the machine, specifically here, here, and in the other two remaining corners as well. So if something were to catch fire in this area, it absolutely won't escape the vigilant attention of these sensitive sensors. Of course, it also has the usual safety features. So for example, if there's a power outage and the machine stops, it will resume work from where it left off. If you tilt the machine, it will stop working, so features like these are definitely included. It's very important that the bottom of the machine is removable. This lower plate can be taken out. There are four screws here that you need to unscrew, and once you've removed this plate, you can even place the machine on a tabletop and engrave directly onto the tabletop. Or if you lift up the entire machine, you can place a rotary attachment underneath, and then with this versatile rotary attachment, you can engrave, for example, on a wine bottle or a glass. Here at the back, you can clearly see the powerful fan that efficiently blows the air and smoke out of the machine. The stepper motors are in their usual and expected places. And here is, of course, the laser head itself, which we will primarily use for precise cutting and detailed engraving. It's very important to note that we have a built-in air assist system. And here is its sturdy tube, which is firmly attached to the head. The air assist tube runs out through here, it comes, it comes, it comes, and this is precisely where you will need to connect the air supply. This is the exact point where the air enters the machine, so you don't even need to assemble anything at all. Just simply connect the rubber tube securely to the back. There aren't many controls, by the way. You'll typically find just a few essential things on the back of the machine. And here you'll find the essential key, which is specifically used to securely lock the machine. If there are young children in the family home, they won't be able to start the machine if you've carefully locked it. It has a dedicated connector for the glass turner, two distinct buttons for starting and resetting, a primary power connector, two versatile USB ports, one for connecting to a PC so you can use the accompanying software, and the other for using the integrated built-in camera through the computer, and there's also a functional card reader. In addition, on top of the machine, there's an easily accessible emergency stop button, which is there so that if something unexpectedly goes wrong, you just quickly hit it and the machine immediately stops, and there's also a main power button. Another control is located here at the front of the machine, this little flip-up touch-sensitive color display, which I'll talk about more later. Well, that's pretty much the entire machine. I think I've thoroughly shown you everything on it and told you everything that truly needs to be said. But let's talk a bit about the software, because that's an interesting topic as well. 
You can easily use the machine offline. You can also use it from your computer and you can also use it from a phone. There are two distinct ways to use it offline. Either you simply insert the memory card and then operate and control the machine through its integrated display and intuitive operating system, or, and this is something I truly appreciate and really like, the machine conveniently saves the last 10 jobs directly in its internal memory. In that particular case, you don't need anything at all. If you want to bring up one of the last 10 jobs again, you can just immediately start it and you don't need any external connection for this specific task. No phone, no personal computer, absolutely nothing else. What's really great is that it has a built-in HD camera, but you can only use this HD camera through the Lineburn software, which is a paid software. In the first year, it costs $90, and from the second year on, due to updates, it costs $30, so once you've bought it, you can keep updating it for about 10,000 forints per year. You can also use it with the free Laser GRBL software, but in that case, you won't be able to use the camera. So I think it's worth investing this money and then paying that 10,000 forints a year if you really want to work properly with this Auto R2. Of course, it's not just about offline use or using it with a PC. There's also the option to use it with a mobile phone. Using it with a mobile phone is done through a very professional software, which allows you to set up a lot of things. And there are also pre-programmed features you can use for example, you can create barcodes, QR codes, and you can even cut puzzles with it. This means that if you want to cut out a puzzle, you can certainly do it from cardboard or plywood, and if you make something like this, your child can then happily play with it at home. Of course, it also lets your creativity unfold. You can input text, upload images, though I won't open that now draw freehand, and there's even an AI feature that turns a photo into a graphic using the software based on gravity. In addition, you can also engage in meaningful social interaction. There's a dedicated community tab, and if you open it, you can see that you can share your beautifully finished works with others, proudly showing off to the entire world the amazing things you've created. Under the Personal tab, you'll readily find the Settings section where you can conveniently update the operating system and the software on the machine. Furthermore, you can also precisely adjust things like exactly how sensitive the fire detection system should be. You might find this necessary. There was a time when sunlight hit the sensor and it thought there was a fire, so it stopped working. But it's not a problem. Just adjust the setting and it'll work perfectly. There's one more thing I'd like to mention about the settings. Adjusting the camera. For this particular process, there's a specific test pattern that needs to be precisely engraved onto a durable plate. It looks like this. You need to mark the four corners of the test pattern on the camera image in the software, and this is what, in theory, calibrates the camera. Now, this doesn't work properly, at least it didn't work properly for me, but fortunately there's a fine tuning option within the line burn settings. I just had to shift it a little to the left and down, and the camera image became perfect. You can save it, and you won't have to deal with it anymore. An interesting thing I haven't shown yet is that you absolutely don't need to buy a separate honeycomb base for cutting with this machine, because the manufacturer provides these convenient rods. These rods are actually meant for you to place the material on them, effectively lifting it away from the bottom plate, so you genuinely don't need a honeycomb sheet at all. The only drawback is that if the head moves quickly, the material can slip on these rods. But during cutting, the head doesn't move that fast anyway. And for engraving, you don't need to use them at all. So in the end, I tried it out and it worked perfectly well. And now let's talk about what you can actually do with this machine, what kinds of operations you can perform. And here I have to tell you something that's really interesting. I've come across quite a few machines already. I've even had 26 size machines here, not just one or two. I have a cutting template that's specifically designed for 20 watt machines, and it looks like this. The primary point of this is that you can precisely set it so the head goes over the very same line between 1 and 5 distinct times, and you can also easily adjust the speed between 150 and 400 millimeters per minute. If you set it up like this, you can effectively test what the cutting capability of this particular machine is truly like. I chose a 6 millimeter thick plate, which is already considered relatively thick, and then I started the cut. It quickly turned out that this particular template was absolutely unsuitable for thoroughly testing the machine's full capabilities because even at a relatively high speed with just a single pass, 
it effortlessly cuts straight through the entire plate. So basically, I just ended up with a bunch of holes and it was impossible to clearly see at which number of passes or at precisely what speed we would experience noticeable differences in the cut or in the overall quality of the cut because it cut through everything. Therefore, I had to make another template where I precisely set the speed between 250 and 500 millimeters per minute, but the result was still not good because it cut through everything again. You can clearly see in the bottom row that with one pass at low speed it still cut through, but at higher speeds it did not anymore. However, from two passes onward it cut through everything at both higher and lower speeds. You can distinctly see this phenomenon in the second row. So this approach did not work either and I was forced to make a third template which was specifically designed to work at speeds between 400 and 650 millimeters per minute, again with 1 to 5 passes and even with this I did not get anywhere meaningful in my testing. So here as well the material is basically cut through almost everywhere. The, there's absolutely no burning whatsoever and we got truly perfect cutting edges. I've never actually worked with a 20 watt machine or a 20 watt head like this particular one before. So with this impressive machine, I genuinely think I could have easily tried experimenting with 8, 10 or even 12 millimeter plywood because it would have cut through that too. This was simply superb and quite remarkable. I told you earlier that I put a sheet in the machine here and actually I put in this small sheet because I engraved on it. This is an aluminum sheet that's painted which makes it perfectly suitable for engraving on these aluminum plates, making the process quite efficient. I put it in the machine because I want to explain how the camera works. The thing is with the old machine, when you really wanted to engrave you actually had to carefully place the material directly under the head, then meticulously move the head precisely over it and then gently push it into the correct optimal position so that it could properly start the actual engraving process. Now with this innovative machine you truly don't need to do any of that manual work because what precisely happens is when you carefully set up the camera you simply place the plate wherever you desire. It genuinely doesn't matter where. And within the intuitive software you can simply drag the specific graphic you want to engrave onto that particular plate or chosen object or wooden board or whatever material you ultimately want to engrave on and the engraving head will then accurately move there and engrave the intricate design in the correct position. I have prepared a detailed demonstration of this for you because I sincerely hope you can clearly see this intricate little motor right here. So I carefully engraved a miniature motor exactly like this one onto the surface of this durable metal plate. I accomplished all of this quite simply by initially placing the metal plate somewhat randomly into the advanced engraving machine. Then through the sophisticated camera system I meticulously set up and defined the exact position and the precise area on which the machine should engrave. Following these precise instructions the machine then flawlessly completed the engraving process process and successfully engraved this motor onto the plate, precisely where I had intended and desired it to be. And I don't even want to begin talking about the truly exceptional quality of the engraving itself. It turned out simply superb, absolutely outstanding. Even on this incredibly tiny image, you can clearly and distinctly read the prominent Honda logo on the tank, so hats off really. It engraves in a very high and remarkably precise quality. The focus size it engraves with is truly excellent. The delicate lines came out very thin and incredibly delicate. Even the tiny little intricate dots on the brake disc, the cooling holes, the minute details, so honestly, hats off, this truly turned out exceptionally well but there were absolutely no significant issues with other materials either. It also successfully did some detailed engraving on a wooden board. Well, this image almost gives a three-dimensional effect. There's a motorcyclist on this one too. Not exactly me, but with the same kind of motorcycle that I ride. So this one is great too, it turned out really, really well. And along with this I also have an acrylic sheet that I engraved. A motorcyclist as well. I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but there's a picture of it in the written article where you can see it better, so this one turned out great too. So basically, I truly tried to test this machine on everything it can possibly be used for, including cutting and engraving, and honestly I couldn't find any significant faults with it. And with the impressive features I mentioned, like the convenient built-in camera and the efficient built-in exhaust, this machine is simply an absolutely perfect choice for any beginner or advanced user. I'm already quite an advanced user, but even I genuinely enjoyed using it and I can clearly see the advantages of this machine. If for no other compelling reason, because if I want to do some small intricate task, like engrave or precisely cut something, I no longer have to go all the way down to the basement all the time and meticulously mess around with my rather large exhaust cabinet there. Instead, I can easily and conveniently do it right here on my spacious desk in my comfortable office since all I truly need to do is simply run the exhaust hose out the nearby window and there's absolutely no smell, no smoke, and no unpleasant odor whatsoever. So it's simply and utterly awesome. Oh.
So overall, I can confidently state that, well, even if it hasn't quite become the ultimate machine of this current decade, the Orto R2 definitely ranks among the very best machines of the entire decade. I can wholeheartedly recommend it to everyone, both to those who, like me, are no longer beginners in this field, and to those who have never dealt with engraving or cutting before, because with this machine, it absolutely won't be difficult at all. Um, and that's it. I hope I've covered everything comprehensively. If you feel I haven't, you'll find a convenient link to my written article in the video description. Go ahead and read it. If you like this video, you can choose from the other two videos appearing next to it. Make sure to check those out as well. You'll easily find the link in the description below, and if I happen to get a special coupon code that makes this excellent device even cheaper, you'll certainly be able to use it to purchase it as well. Take good care, look after yourselves, and I'll be back very soon with another comprehensive review. Until then, bye for now.